Inside Rangers Football is brought to you by Physicians Premier. Our conveniently located, freestanding ERs are fully equipped and expertly staffed so you get the best care closest to home. At Physicians Premier, you'll find faster service, friendly doctors, and a comfortable level like no other. And Texas Regional Bank. Buying or building a home? We have construction and mortgage loans to help. For all your personal or business banking needs, Texas Regional Bank, the people you know. And Texas 46, a homestyle hill country restaurant has been in the Spring Branch community for over 30 years, where the focus is on a Lone Star favorite, Slow Cook Barbecue. We can cater or host your next large event too. Welcome to Texas 46. Welcome to another episode of Inside Rangers Football. I'm your host, Brian Freeman, alongside Smith Valley head coach Larry Hill. Coming up, we'll preview the Rangers' 26-6A opener against Clemens, but first, a look back at the game from this past Friday. A tough one for the Rangers, a 17-14 loss to Madison at Rangers Stadium. And coach, you look back at this football game. Yes, a tough one. Another tight game, though, for you, a non-district play against another quality opponent. What were some of your biggest takeaways from this past week? Well, you know, obviously we wanted to take away a win. There's no question about that. But uh, you mentioned quality opponent. Uh, some, uh, they've got some really fine players. And, uh, you know, we, much like our first game, similar narrative, you know, got off to a slow start. Uh, make a pretty good surge, mm -hmm. um, you know, give ourselves a chance to win at the end. And, you know, we don't make quite enough plays to get that done. But uh, improvement in some areas. I thought, um, you know, I thought there were some kicking game areas that we did a little better job in. I thought we ran the ball more consistently mm -hmm. uh, this game throughout as opposed to the first game where it kind of took us a little while in the second half. And, uh, uh, you know, with one exception, of course, one exception can hurt you, you know, prevented a lot of big plays. And mm -hmm. so, you know, good teams kind of uh, make you be on your P's and Q's. Some of them we were and some of them we weren't. But, uh, you know, we would have liked to have played three games. The reality of it is with weather, we played two. We'd like to have won every game. We haven't done that. So, uh, But the reality is this week is when it starts, no matter if everything has gone right up to now or nothing's gone right or something in between. This is when you've got to be ready to play, and uh, only having two games and getting ready, it's, it's ready or not, here we go, but uh, uh, we felt like we grew a little bit as a ball club the other night. With the game so tight throughout, it felt like every possession, every play was magnified. Did this game have a district game feel to it to you? I think it did, and uh, you know, I think we, we certainly stepped up and made our fair share of plays in those moments, but uh, tense white knuckle times is what it's going to be like in this league, as we all know from experience, and so the more times you're in that situation, it's not easy the next time, but at least you're a little more comfortable maybe. I've uh, been here before, and you know, hopefully we're taking that away from it. Now, defensively, you've played eight quarters of football this season. You've only given up four touchdowns so far to the opposition. What has impressed you the most about your play on that side of the ball? Well, you know, I think we're just pretty solid everywhere. You know, it's not like we're doing it all with run defense or all with pass defense. We're getting it done with a lot of different guys. We're playing 16, 18 guys pretty regularly, rolling people in and out. So not only creating depth, but uh, keeping guys fresh. And, uh, you know, I think our defensive tackle play with Trey Witcher and Will Gibbons has been outstanding. And, uh, you know, obviously we're not flawless. Uh, you know, the big play the other night was what hurt us, but uh, on, the, on the one big long throw and catch and run. So, uh, but yeah, for, for the most part, we're limiting those guys to, uh, to field goals or you know making some key stops in the red zone. We're a long way from where we want to be, but playing pretty good on that side of the ball. Now, offensively, kind of similar to the opener against Midland Lee, you struggled to score points. In fact, you didn't score until the second half. What have you seen from your offense now two games into the year? Well, you know, we got to, we got to quit turning the ball over. You know, we've had four turnovers in two games, and uh, you, you can't do that. You know, we've got to take care of the football and drive killers. You know, we had some good drives going on both on both of those turnovers. And then, of course, you put your defense in a bye and give the opponent a short field. And so with those, we fell behind 10 to nothing, which in a three-point loss, you can, you know, it's pretty easy to see that, that had that gone differently, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the game might have gone differently. But it didn't. And, uh, 
you know, I was more, as I said, I think we've gotten better at running the football, and, and which helps your throwing game. Now you're throwing when you want to throw, not when you have to throw, and everybody in the stadium knows you're going to throw. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a little bit smoother in, the, in our throwing game, particularly our short uh, possession throws the other night. So, you know, uh, as young a team as we are, really on both sides of the ball, still trying to find out what this team is good at mm -hmm. and what are things we need to stay away from and what are things we need to feature. And, yeah, you know, that's what non-district's all about. We only got two opportunities for right. that, but hopefully after two games, we got a little better idea of what we need to feature. Now, last week in the preview of the game, you and I spoke a lot about the history you'd had against Madison. Did this game feel reminiscent to some of the ones you had against the Mavericks back in the day when you two were in a district with one another? Well, in the district, and of course, we played them in the quarterfinals, I think two, maybe three different times we played in the quarterfinals. And, you know, they were always real tense, uh, go down to the end scores. Uh, I say that. There were a time or two we pulled away from them. But uh, it did have that feel. Really, both of our games have kind of had a, a tense moments, particularly in the second half, tense yeah. finishes. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's good to get your players exposed to that. You'd like for it not to go that way every mm -hmm. week. You like when when is that game that everything clicks and you pull away? Well, you you never know. Uh, hopefully, at some point we'll have that game. But we also know in this district you're liable to be in these kind of finishes a lot. So more experience you get, the better. Yes, the Rangers did come up short this past Friday against Madison, but still, Smithson Valley had plenty of big plays this past week. Let's now take a look at this week's plays of the week. Yeah, let's go take a look at those. Our first big play is a defensive play late in the third quarter. We're going to focus on Corey McElroy, our senior outside linebacker, who's got the circle around him. He's threatening blitz, and then he backs out, looks of the way. Now he does come on the blitz. Meanwhile, our cornerback to the top of the screen, that's Nick Aiken, moves in and takes away the quick throw. You can see the quarterback looking there trying to make the quick throw. Nick and our safety on that side of the field have taken it away, makes him hold the ball when he does, then Corey's able to close and get the big sack. So a blitz, great coverage, and then gets the big sack. Here it is from the end zone. You can see Corey, number four, there just to your right with the circle around him. Backing off, showing blitz, and then pretending maybe he's not blitzing. Snap comes out. Quarterback is looking to the right. You can, that coverage that we mentioned just a few seconds ago has happened. He can't, have the, he can't make the throw on time, and we get the big sack. Energizes our players, energizes the crowd. A short time later then, we get a big fourth down throw and catch. That's senior Jeremiah Gilliam uh, that's noted at the top with the circle around him. He's going to run a little in route. You can see he goes up the field, fakes a little out route on the safety, and then bends it back to the inside. Levi makes a nice throw. You can see the ball right there perfectly thrown. Jeremiah catches it, goes into the end zone, pulls us to within three points. Uh, we can look at that again from the end zone. You get a real nice view of uh, Levi. Uh, right in the middle of the pocket, gets a little pressure, steps up, makes a great throw under pressure. You can see two Mavericks closing uh, in on him. He hangs in there and throws a perfect strike down the field for a touchdown. Right after this touchdown is our third big play. It's a kickoff team. Mason Reed, our kicker, has spotted a hole in the um, uh, re receiving team's uh, protection, and so he bloop kicks the ball across the field. When it does, the ball hits the ground, and we'll focus on a couple of uh, seniors here on the left here. We have Christian Romano on the right, another senior. Uh, we have Colton Eilers. The ball hits the ground. Both of them close on the ball carrier, make him redirect, and when he goes sideways and back up, then Tom Zoe comes from the middle field, gets a big hit. We get him out of bounds and down on the 15-yard line, giving them a long field, and our defense is able to stop. From the end zone here, you can see uh, our kickoff team coming right down at you. You can see where Madison's stacked to this side of the field, so we cross field bloop it, kind of cross them up here. You can see the ball hit the ground right there. They, they aren't able to field it. Well-placed kick. Here comes Colton and Christian, who we mentioned a few minutes ago. Make the play, make him turn back, and there's Tom Zoig on the tackle. Well-orchestrated, well-executed uh, special teams play. And those are our plays of the week. And Coach, the one I want to highlight was the, was the sack against Higgins. You and I in the preview last week talked about how difficult of a player he can be to handle given his dual threat capabilities. How well do you feel as if you handled him and how positive is that to get pressure on him considering the type of quarterbacks you'll be facing moving forward? Yeah, we'll see some guys similar in skill set to him. And, uh, you know, that's a, a little bit of a coverage sack, trying to throw quick. We roll some coverage, made him hold it a little longer, and then the pressure got to him. Those are the kinds of plays that we'll have to make. And, uh, 
Can't bring pressure all the time, but when you do, you hope to get a big play, and we did in that instance. Again, the Rangers are looking to bounce back this Friday when they open 26-6A play against Clemens. A game we'll preview coming up in just a bit. Coming up next, it'll be time for this week's Senior Moments, Little Men, Trivia, and more. Back with more Inside Rangers football in just a moment. Come on in. Hey coach, I'm here to try out for the Rangers mascot. I mean, what's better than the guy who Smithson Valley was named after? Don't you mean Benjamin Smithson? You're Benjamin Franklin. Smithson? Oh, that makes sense. He was instrumental in founding this area in 1856. He was one of the first Rangers. The first Ranger. What position did he play for you, coach? He was a Texas Ranger, a Western lawman. I get it now. I like where this is headed. Be right back. Hey coach, how about another perfectly executed shameless plug while I'm gone? If you need video production work, there's no finer organization than WIC Productions. It's who we trust for Rangers Network and Game Night Scoreboard Production at Ranger Stadium. Well? Oh, you nailed it. Rangers, we will be. Wick Productions. Watching a video is just better than reading stuff. Since I've had GVTC installed in my office, I've been able to get a lot more done. With fiber speeds up to a gig a second, I can turn in all my schoolwork on time, keep up on social media, and watch game film with no interruptions. Whoa, we haven't even played that game yet. Yeah, it's that fast. Enjoy uninterrupted entertainment with your favorite app through our professionally installed GVTC Wi-Fi home network. Log on to GVTC.com to sign up today. Chicken Express is the place for legendary chicken tenders, the freshest sides, and the best sweet tea in Texas, Chicken E-Sweet Tea. Let's give a big thank you to the Brown family for supporting all the high schools in the area for over a decade. Dine in, drive up, or drive through. We'll see you at Chicken Express. We've got spirit. Yeah, we do. Fill up your tank and support the Rangers, too. When you get gas, look for the Rangers Spirit Pump because Pit Stop and Fishers are donating a percentage of sales from that pump to the Smithson Valley Athletic Booster to support our student athletes. Get gas here and fill up the Booster Club's bank. Here's where you can find your spirit pumps. When you see it, pull up and fill up, Rangers. Welcome back to Inside Rangers Football. Of course, every week we talk football, previewing the game coming up, recapping the game that just happened. But we also have fun with Coach Hill's senior players and standing by with those seniors for this week's Senior Moments is our very own Emily Wick. Emily? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Brant. All right, boys, you know the drill. Get your phones out, text your mama hi, and let her know you love her. So, Colton, Wyatt, and Garrett, I am so glad you're here with me today. So, Colton, if you could describe yourself in one word, what would that word be? Um, a baller. <laughs> a baller? Oh. A baller. <laughs> a baller. And, and why would you call yourself a baller, even though I think I have a pretty good idea? Um, because I throw doubts no matter what. Oh. <laughs> You know, I did watch the game last year when you were up against Judson, and I was pretty impressed. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I would agree with that. You're a baller. Yeah. <laughs> so, Garrett, if you were in an emergency and had to get out of your house quickly, what three things would you take with you? Oh, people? Or, like, things? <laughs> things. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I take my bed. Wait, Your bed. Wait. Okay. Well, I have, like unlimited space, I can carry. Yeah, it. you have as much time as you need, but you you're in a hurry. But yeah, definitely my bed. Okay, your bed. Uh, so sleep's don't important. Forget the don't forget the pillow. Well, I, that comes that with comes, the bed. Oh, okay. Right, okay, <laughs> and then number two. I take the refrigerator. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Um, and then I would take. No, 
not. I have no idea. <laughs> how about, how about, how about, how about your oven? Because what, what if you need to cook something from the fridge? Well, I have no power to cook the oven. Okay, how or about, the oven. microwave. You only, you, need need you only need a wall plug. You right, microwave. <laughs> microwave. So food and sleep seem to be really important to you. I agree. Yeah, okay. 100%. <laughs> So Wyatt, if I were to walk into your bedroom right now, what would I find? Do you keep a tidy room? All right, so this is extremely complicated. It gets me heated, actually. I share a room with my younger brother, and he is the messiest man alive, and he's 12. So is he a man then? Uh, he wishes. But I am extremely organized, mm -hmm. so like, I'll clean my side, I'll be like, oh my god. And then I have to sort all that. And even worse, my two other brothers are here, so we have two beds, two air mattresses, and three messy boys, and I have to clean everything. Do you think you're enabling him, possibly? No, because I'll yell at him to do it, and he's like, no, no. So then I'm like, fine, I'll do it. And what does your mom have to say about all that? She, she I don't know, she doesn't care. She doesn't care. It's clean, it's fine. She doesn't go upstairs anymore, because it's just, it's like our dumb. It's just too overwhelming, yeah, yeah. okay. My locker, I have the nicest locker in the locker. Too. You do? I do. I kind of do. I do. I guarantee you. So if I were to go into the to the to the locker room right now and well, line them all up. Right now, but during the season? During the season, you have everything's on a hook. My, you have to wait my for locker to space get is out. all organized. Perfect. So, like, so do you feel like you need to clean the other guy's lockers too? Does no, that drive just, you that crazy? That makes me laugh. I'm like, they're messy. <laughs> they're messy. <laughs> they're messy. Like, they just throw stuff in, just put whatever. I'm like, ooh. Ugh, well, I'm going to come back to it in two hours. Doesn't matter. Or the whole year. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it forever. Well, I don't do it for the whole year. That's gross. <laughs> I clean my stuff. I take it out at the end of the week. Like Mark's yeah, locker. Week. Mark's locker is disgusting. Mark. It does smell in there. It it's, 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 it's a little overwhelming. Sweaty, man. It's a little I overwhelming. <laughs> okay, I have a joke for you. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. My jokes are awesome. Are you ready? I'm ready. So, why do you think fish are so smart? Probably because they travel in schools. <gasps> yes, they oh, travel in dang. schools. <laughs> Good job, Wyatt. Not all fish travel in schools. Sharks don't. Yeah. Beta fish don't. Bass don't. <laughs> Dolphins don't. Dolphins don't. Oh. oh! They are. Hey, they still found them. That's not a fish, though. That's to make a fish. <laughs> so, Wyatt, I heard you love to sing in the car. Yeah. All right, I want you to show me. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to sing that much because I might fall Yeah, you're going to break the camera, dude. The microphone. Pour some sugar on me in the name of love. Pour your sugar on me. Okay, that's Come on, <laughs> Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Oh that gosh. was awesome. So throw all the way back to Def Leppard. How did you get into Def Leppard? Well, like I've always liked, I like a lot of music. Okay. So when I got my car, I was in the car. I was like, man, I really hate commercials, dude. Yeah. I, I listen to real radio. Okay. Radio. Okay. So like I'll be like, oh, commercials, <laughs> commercials, man. And I got to 106.7. Okay. The Eagle. The Eagle. And that's all I listen to now. <laughs> And so, like, whenever so I'll sing, I can sing every song that comes on. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, uh, no, uh, uh. I have my sunglasses so, on, just chilling in the car. Do, do your parents listen to Def Leppard? Is that where it came from at all? Not really. I just no, like, you just figured it out. I'm in the car, I'm in the car with my brother, and I love singing all the time everywhere. You probably scare him, too. No, he oh, hates dude. it. He probably wants to jump really? out the window. He hates it so much. Like, I'll be in the car, and I'll just yell I'll be like, right in his face, and he's like, shut you're taking, up! You're taking the school, too, like that? Yeah, no, and I was You're, like, taking, I you're taking his dirty room out on him. Yeah. 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 my windows down, loud as possible. This is like, <laughs> You're gonna lose brain cells. Probably. <laughs> Probably lost my ears headbanging so hard. <laughs> headbanging. <laughs> so a little ranger trivia for y'all, and whoever wins gets a prize. Well, I want These the may be pretty tough. I'm really gonna put y'all up to see how big a rangers you are. Are you ready? You know we are. From 1976 through 1979, where did the Rangers play their home football games? Wait, don't say it. Let us get a chance because you probably know it. Okay. <laughs> He's amazing at trivia, you don't understand. Okay. I thought it was 76 to 79? 
1976 through 1979, where did the Rangers play their home games? Smith Valley Middle School. Mm, nope, what? sorry. That's wrong. I know it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that where the Oldman High School was? Yeah, yeah but that was, I don't think, 76, 79. It's probably like 80, 90s. <laughs> this may be a shocker for y'all. They actually played in New Braunfels at Unicorn State. Oh, yep. That's, that's, that's how oh, they. That's <laughs> nope. I wouldn't, oh. even, I wouldn't even set it. <laughs> Question number two. How many people can Ranger Stadium hold? 8,000. Anyone else? Coach Hill is always like, 10,000 people in those stands. 10,000. 10,000 or one. Um, this is true, you guys say 10,000. Say 6,000. No. The technical number, and if I'm going to give a prize, is going to go to Garrett. Yes! It oh. actually, Ranger Stadium holds 8,500 people. Dang. Take that! There you go. Oh, it's close to No. Oh, well, well, my mom called me or texted me. Oh, she What's called she you said? back. Oh, she, I'm going to call her back. Like, okay. All right, all right. We can wait for mom. All right. Shout out to Garrett's mom. It's all Shout right. out to mom. Hey, that's all here. Shout out to pops it. everywhere. Right, there go. Turn it up. It's all the way up. I don't want to speak. There you go. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, Mom? What's going on, baby? Yeah, I'm just on senior moments. I came to tell you I love you. I love you. Did you have fun? I still on it, Mom. <laughs> you're on. Yeah, you're in the We're track. recording right now. <laughs> We're recording. Hello. <laughs> I'm bored. You're on senior moments. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people? I love you, son. Oh, shoot, my football. <laughs> All right. Say thanks, Mom. Thank you, Mom, for driving me to practice when I was a freshman. Oh, Lord. Welcome. <laughs> How fun. All right, Mom. I'll talk to you later. Love you, kiddo. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what a great mom. Yeah. What a great mom. Right, that was right, awesome. Shout, <laughs> shout to moms everywhere. Okay, guys, so now you're in character. Starting with Garrett. You have a hot dog on your head. Now I need you to act that out. If you were a hot dog, what exactly would you be doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Wyatt, you're a chicken. Oh, yes. Oh. Hey, you got a peck of head. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Not bad. Gobble, gobble. That's, that's a dirty one. What else? Chicken's no I was, gobble. I was in character. Colton, you're a jester. Oh. I'm not sure what I gotta do. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Doug Round? Make me laugh. Coach Brant, back to you. Go Rangers! Well, Coach, we know just how invested you are in your program, the players are, and the fans, but how about those Ranger moms? Well, those moms want to make sure those boys don't screw up on there and do something to embarrass the family. So, right. uh, Miss Altman had to check in on that. Well, the Ranger moms are raising their own little men, and with that, we have this week's Little Men segment with Coach Jeff Shin. A popular term that you hear in football these days is RPO, which stands for Run Pass Option. That can mean a lot of things and usually does mean a lot of things depending on which team or offensive system you're talking about. But here at Smithson Valley we do employ some RPOs and uh, what that means is we actually have a running play and a passing play all in the same play and then our quarterback decides right at the last minute are we going to run this football or am I going to throw this football? And am I going to throw it to this player? Am I going to throw it to that player? Or am I going to throw it to that player? Or, as I said earlier, am I going to hand it off to a running back? So sometimes we call those two-in-one plays, three-in-one plays, even four-in-one plays, uh, depending on uh, how the play is structured. We have Coach Shin here today, our offensive coordinator, also coaches our wide receivers, and he's going to talk about just one of uh, our RPOs, a typical one that will show up in a game almost every week. So, Coach, use the little men here and take them through one of our RPOs. All right, Coach, what we got here is uh, an RPO, one of our uh, favorite RPOs, if you will, trying to get an easy throw uh, for our quarterback uh, to a single receiver or to our multiple receivers. 
plus a run. So our quarterback has the pin last is what we like to say. Um, really finding the best play um, to face the, de the defense uh, that we're facing that week. In this case, whatever run we want to have, uh, we've got a couple of runs that we can, we can call here, but we're going to call a, a cat RPO, which cat RPO is we're just running three-step stop routes with our receivers. Over here, uh, we have a color tag that we can, we can give multiple routes here, but we'll work the three-step here. So quarterback coming up to the line. He's checking uh, his cat side. Do I, do I like a throw over here? If he likes it, loves it, we take it. If he doesn't like it, he'll check his single receiver side, likes it, loves it, he takes it. Doesn't like either one of the throws, um, probably the best option is to hand the football off or run a uh, quarterback run with double lead blockers. And uh, that gives us the ability to attack the entire field and uh, let our quarterback get us in the best play possible. So the concept is... If I like that throw, I take it. If I don't, I'll look to that throw. Maybe they took that away. Then if I don't like it, I'll look to that throw. If they took that away, then they've probably committed a lot of defenders to the pass, so let's run the ball. Theoretically, we should be right every time as long as the quarterback makes the right decision. Well, that's it as far as the little men go. Now let's go to some live tape and see what that looks like in action. Okay, here we are set with uh, our twin receivers that are going to be working the cat RPO concept to the bottom of your screen. Our quarterback's in the backfield with two backs, and right now he's uh, taking a look at the defense. He's noticing that we have a loose corner down here at the bottom, and so he's deciding to take that throw. So here he is, pre-snap. See him checking it out. Boom. Bang it out there. Go get yards. We handed the ball off and made 10 yards, we'd love it. Uh, here we're throwing it out there, making 10 yards, taking what the defense gives us. Here we go. Next, we have a shot where we have a cat. You can see the twin receivers up to the top. They're going to be working the cat. Uh, looks like the defense bringing a little bit of a blitz. Safety's rolling down to the top, as you can see. And uh, Luke, our quarterback here, says, uh, I don't like the cat throw. Let's hand it off. Always a good option. And here we go. Get a nice run inside. O-line does a great job, and we score a touchdown. The RPO, in this case, the CAT RPO, and you saw an example there of running it and is throwing it. So thank you, Coach Shin, for explaining that to us. And now let's go to Ranger Trivia. This week in Rangers trivia, the Smithson Valley Clemens rivalry has seen the Rangers and Buffaloes face off against each other 18 times, and Friday's game will mark the fifth year in a row that the two will have met in district play. What year do the Rangers and Buffaloes first meet on the football field? Is the answer A, 1986, B, 1995, or C, 2000? The answer is A, 1986. The Buffaloes won that game and won the first nine games in the series and 11 of the first 12, but the Rangers have since defeated Clemens four times in the last six matchups and look for another win of the series in the 26-6A opener Friday night. So, Coach, yes, a lot of history between these two programs. Friday will mark the 19th all-time meeting between Smith Valley and Clemens. What are some of the memories that you have in all the years you've played the Buffaloes? Well, you know, my first year here, uh, we played Clemens. We were in their league. Of course, we were 4A, or what is now 5A at the time. And mm -hmm. uh, both had subpar years, real frankly. And then the next year, we both bounced back in different districts and made the playoffs. And uh, several times through the years, we played them in the playoffs. And then, of course, now we've come full circle back in each other's league. And... Uh, Always um, highly touted matchups, usually with a lot on the line, uh, very close competitive games, and you know both teams have had their moments, and uh, uh, you know we, they're tough. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, geographically where we sit, I think that's somebody we can count on playing probably from now on. And again, both teams looking for 1-0 starts to 26-6A play on Friday. We'll preview that game coming up next. We'll be right back with more Inside Rangers football in just a moment. Let's go. Hurry up. Get the play in. Okay, here we go. Left retainer. Headgear. No popcorn. Straight teeth. That's a good call. Headgear? Straight teeth? Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. What's going on here? I thought I left you in charge. It was a good call. It was a great call. It was a really good, good call. call. Okay. Run the play.
Smoky Mo's is great. You can feed a whole bunch of people all in a little bit of money. It's perfect for Friday nights. My boy is a football player and this fills him up. The brisket is awesome. I like brisket and sweet. Brisket. 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 I can't say it. <laughs> they have the best turkey, brisket, sausage in all of Comal County. I agree and the kids love it too. You're never going to play offensive line for the Rangers eating salad. Come get some beef. We are back on Inside Rangers Football. Before we get into our preview against Clemens, it's now time to check in with volleyball head coach Courtney Patton to see what else is happening in Smith Valley Athletics. And coach, I understand cross country is coming off of another strong meet. Yeah, they did really well. All four teams won their division running in the rain over the weekend. Um, and this weekend, they're going to travel to Arkansas for the Chili Pepper Festival, hoping to bring back another win. Tennis last week played Canyon and won 10 to 5. And this week, they're going to play East Central. But don't forget, Ranger fans, we need all of you there. 7.30 Friday at Lenhoff Stadium. Let's be there and let's be loud. Well, Coach, obviously I'm going to be there, and yes, Coach Hill, he should be there too. As Smith Valley opens 26-6A play this Friday on the road in shirts against the Clemens Buffaloes. Clemens coming into the game with a record of 2-1. and one. Now, Coach, again, this game will be in shirts. This will be your first true road game of the season this year. You've played two home games so far. What do you hope to learn from your football team as they play their first road game of the season? Well, you know, uh, it's always a tough place to play, you know, and part of, part of the reason it's a tough place to play are the two inhabitants of that stadium, Clemens mm -hmm. and Steele. Uh, those guys would be tough to play no matter if you played them in a parking lot. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you know, it's a, it's a um, pretty, pretty tight-packed stadium. Yeah. Uh, therefore, you know, both sides are going to be full, a lot on the line, as we, we know. I mean, obviously, it's a seven-game district race, so you know you got to be careful about laying too much emphasis on one game. You want to win your opener, but the reality of it is, four teams are going to win this week, four teams are going to lose, and that's going to happen every week till the season ends. So, you know, uh, you know, we're certainly not placing you know all our emphasis on this ball game, but there's no question we want to win. We're playing and uh, they're keeping score, so. It's a big ball game, and it puts you one up on four teams if you can win the game. And again, I mentioned the record two and one for the Buffaloes against a really quality non-district schedule. Let's now start breaking down east side of the football, and we'll start with the defense. A year ago, this was one of the top defenses in the district. A lot of faces are back from last year's team. What challenges do the Buffaloes pre present to your offense on the field on Friday? Well, you know, their front seven's very strong against the run, you know, and their cornerbacks play tight to your receivers and try to take away your short throws. and. Uh, a little different style of defense than you see every week, and I think they do that on purpose. They do have excellent personnel. They're, they're front four are big, strong kids who get off blocks and make plays, and uh, you know that's kind of who they are. Play defense and run the ball. That's kind of their personality, and uh, this year is no exception. Now, you mentioned running the ball on offense. You, you look at the personnel offensively, a lot different than the defense in, in, the, in regards to the fact that Clemens has a lot of new faces in offense this year mm -hmm. compared to what you saw a year ago. So how do you slow down what Clemens wants to do offensively? Well, you know, they're going to run the ball in, a, in, in multifaceted ways. They're going to run the quarterback. They're going to run their tailback. They're going to run some read game. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, they're going to try to spread the ball around, go inside, go outside, go read play. So, you know, and then they've got dynamic playmakers who will end up with the ball in their hands when they do that. So stopping them is, 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 a, is a chore. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's what they're going to do. They're committed to, you know, they're certainly going to take their shots down the field throwing it, have some good receivers. We'll take some quick throws, but by and large, they're going to try to beat you running the football. We spoke earlier in the show about the tough starts for your offense two games into the season. How significant would it be to score early and establish an early lead in this game? There's no doubt. You know, you want to get any team, Clemens included, uh, battling back. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to be the one battling back. You know over the course of the year you, that's going to go both ways some, but you know, it'd be, we, we, it's time for us to, yeah. to make someone else play catch up. and. Uh, that starts with our defense getting three and out and getting them off the field. And it starts with our offense taking care of the ball, not turning it over and putting smooth drives together and going down there and scoring. Everybody wants to do that. I mean, that's stating the obvious, but it's time for us to do that. Well, Coach, best of luck on Friday. All right, Brand, thank you. Again, Smith Valley takes on Clemens in the 26-6A opener at 7.30 Friday from Linoff Stadium. A game we'll have for you on rangersnetwork.com. For Smith Valley head coach Larry Hill, I'm Brian Freeman. This has been Inside Rangers Football. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.